Our story today is way too intricate for me to waste your time trying to craft some clever metaphor or analogy in this intro, so let's just get right into it. My name's Stevie. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Just so you know, our video today doesn't tell an entire story, it's only the first out of two or maybe even three parts. But of course, it started where and how everyone in Rust begins. As naked, on the beach. Oh my god, this is perfect. Alright, so I kind of planned it ahead where I want to build, and I'm thinking right here. Yo. Yo. All right, I'm thinking P7 right above the road, and I'm pretty much there, and I have stuff to make a base, if you can get to me. Well, I got killed, and then my game crashed, and so I'm loading in right now. Okay. Nice, just give me comms for a second. I'm gonna try to sneak this base. So, the idea for my base location was as follows. Like I said, I wanted to put it down right here in P7 beside the road. And not my base location, but our base location. I was playing duo with Brocky, just like in my last video, and if you couldn't tell from all the naked spawning in, whenever I loaded into the server, this server had just freshly wiped. Near 400 players competing for the best base locations, the best spots to start gathering resources. But why this specific spot? Why beside the road in P7? Well, the answer is simple. I liked it a lot. There was an Oxum's gas station on either side of us, which in my opinion is the best monument to recycle at. It's really easy to cover even if you don't have that many people. We were right on the road, which is where a bunch of barrels and crates spawn, so it's easy to get components, and right across the street was water treatment which is a monument that brings loads of PvP. I was actually pretty fortunate to make it this far inland without dying on my first try. I had farmed up some resources, I would gotten the TC down and a lock on it, but then there were people outside. Now, as much as I wanted to fight these guys here, I decided it was best if I run. I had no idea how many of them there were, and because I'd gotten tagged right off the rip in a bow fight situation, if there were two or three of them, I could quickly get overwhelmed. Plus, if they liked my base location and they were persistent, they could shoot out or hit out my TC, even though it already had a key lock on it. I simply couldn't risk that. I was in too perfect of a spot to let my desire to take this bow fight ruin the beginning of my wipe, and so I ran a long, long ways away from my base. Eventually, after wrapping around the tip of a mountain, I had lost the group that was chasing me, and I started running back to my base, just as Brocky was getting there from the other side, and we collapsed on two groups that were fighting in between us. There's a, are you hitting trees right now? I'm crouch, I'm hitting one right now, but it's palm tree. You're so. not hitting a cactus? No, no, no. Can you come to top middle P6 right now? This guy's gonna be loaded. Yeah. P6 middle. We're on the opposite ends. We're on the opposite Okay, ends. you see the two I'm that he's opposite. fighting? He yeah. downed one of them. Rush, rush now. I'm gonna hit him because he seems like a Chad, okay? He's running away. He's fighting me. I got him. What? I got this guy. Can you get this guy? Hit him, he's dead. Nice, nice, nice. Well played. Much, but that was a lot of up right there. yeah that was well played this is me i'm gonna invite you no thanks <laughs> come here uh no thanks <laughs> so the idea is this is going to be one of our compound gates i'm just placing it first because the TC's on the second story of main base, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a 
nice. Cozy little base. All right, you have small boxes for me? Well, our thing's done. Holy shit. I still have a bunch more. Oh my god. Easy. Put in whatever else you have. Alright, arrows. There's nine bone arrows. I'm about to go make more. That was quite all of stuff I have. Oh, yeah, yeah. Take this on the ground. Would you care to make a level one, please? I can make a level two as well. <laughs> Shit, well don't, because we're gonna save that for the main base. We probably have enough stone to make the first two stories already. So just save it for now, make it, and we'll put it in a box. Abundance of cloth in there. Well, oh, that's our call. Oh, you're gaining. <laughs> I'm close as shit. Oh, keep shooting, though. We're getting shot from some. They're roof campers to the right. Four of them. They're bow roof campers. Just keep running, keep running at this guy. Get close quarters with him. I'm hit. Got him. Nice. They're pushing you, pushing around the backside. I'm dead. Oh, he's got P2. Run, run, run. run. Hot spot. I'm hit with a fully charged compound bow. What? I'm dead to P2. I gotta cross you now. Let's go out and make some gains. Is this you behind me? No, 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 no. Not you jumping up this thing? Uh-uh. Don't die. He lives in this one by two. Hit one. Hit that forward one. Hit Hazzy. Oh, I killed one. It has he again, he's dead. Has he at the base? I'm pushing the body I killed on the left. Yeah. There are dead bodies here, including this former just watch door. Yeah, this guy's loaded. Vector. Holy shit. Am I being pushed by two? Oh, oh. Nice, happy. So loaded. I will come with. Yeah, just bait him over with a bow. Easy clap. Come on. He's spawning on his loot as he was running. <laughs> Looting this guy. Oh my god, did you look at his body? No. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> what? He's absolutely stacked. Brock, I think we picked the perfect spot to build. This guy was loaded on tons of resources. This guy was so. This guy had like a row of stone, um, a stone. thousand sulfur, and high qual, a bunch of comps. So while I was building the main base, Brocky had killed some guys that were loaded on resources. And because they were, I could continue building the main base afterwards. And that's what I did. Now, I'm not going to show you that, but I will let you know that the design is very similar to the one in my last video. The concept 
is the same. It's a skinny looking base that's extremely inexpensive and looks very easy to raid. It has no real honeycombing, but the loot rooms that are on the side of the base serve as an extra layer of protection before raiders can get to the core. Furthermore, it would eventually have a nice shooting floor with peak downs and a tall tower on the very top of the roof. If you haven't yet seen that video, I'd recommend you do. And without spoiling anything, I'll just let you know that that base design from my previous video did its job. So that's why we decided to make a very similar one this wipe. But at this point, we didn't have all the resources we needed to fully complete the base. After not too long, the sun was setting, Brocky was taking a snack break, and I heard some fighting outside. Holy hell, he's loaded. It's an hour into wipe and this guy was roaming solo with the Thompson with this many comps. Or maybe his teammates died, but that's this is huge, honestly. But as exciting and as profitable as this was, things would only prove to get better. That very next morning, after Brocky had gotten back, we heard shots at Oxum's gas station. I have instant shells. Might as well kill this Sar guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill Sar. Go now. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. Kill Sar. Kill Tommy. Should I bring Tommy over right now? Another? No one right now. You're gonna play. I'm on the way, I'm on the way. He's crouch running in towards the garage side. I'm up top, crouching I'm up top. The garage. Crouching into the garage right now. He's kind of a beamer. Sargon might have killed him. I'm coming upstairs, I'm coming up right now. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. Okay, okay, come to me, come to me, through the through the hole. Pump. Sar. I don't have anything else. There's some cloth. No armor? No. Make it with the cloth. He, there's a guy there, by the way. Right here. Hit him once. Hit him once, twice. Head. Head him, come down. Hit him twice. Killed him. I'm picking you up. I'm 1 HP. If anyone shoots me now, I'm dead. You're up in 3, 2, 1. You're insane. You can jump off and go loot those bodies right now. They're both down. There's a guy coming back. I think he's going to the bodies. He's dead. Nice. Just heal. Start healing. Start healing. So you got stuff? Yes. Okay. We just need to loot all of these bodies here. Clear out all the guys that are inside and leave. Where are you? Um, let me loot for now. Just stay cover. Let's go. Let's get out of here. We're, let's go. I'm, 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 I'm dropping you. down. Um. Revo kid out there. The Revo kid's gonna shoot at us from, from to the right. Hit him through Hit the Alright, let's just keep running to these rocks. Do you have any meds you can drop me? Any? Um, here's one. Here's one. Take one. Okay. Emergency man. How much cloth you got? A ton. Drop me some. I'm this way. Dropping you half right here. Okay. Get all the way up this ridge. 
Right, what's the safest way we can get back? They know where we live. They're the guys that live in that roof camper base that you never saw. Oh. I see the guy down there at the cave looking at us. Do you have one med left? Yeah, I do. Thank God. Keep it at all cost for researching. Down to the left, there's a kid. I don't know if he sees us. He's a bow guy. You want to shoot him? No. I do. <sighs> oh, no, no. I really did. All right. Here's what I think we do. They live in that base right there that you see 170. I say we beeline 150 in the direction of our base, and we have the cover of that big rock if they come from the left or the right. Oh, uh, there's people outside our base, yeah. You see him? Yeah, I just saw someone right at our front door. Okay. This is gonna be tricky. Oh uh, yeah, he's running back and forth between our bases. We can, we can just full crouch past this big rock all the way to the back side of our base. They'll never see that coming. Oh, wait, there's a guy coming back. He's just a boat guy, but... Oh, don't chase it towards Damn us. Damn it. Oh, I thought he saw us and he was hiding. Just don't move. Yeah. one chopping wood right in front of us. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, this other guy's crouching around the big rock. This is so stupid. Don't do it, please. Okay, 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 okay. I don't think he's with them. He said don't do it. He said don't do it. Please, I'm begging. Yeah, he no, I heard, I heard. There's a guy behind us to the right. He might be with them. I'm going to start pushing up. I think they're going to be hiding in our main base. Not the starter domain, the one on the left. Got to up. No, 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 no. Just sprinting. We have range advantage on them. <laughs> okay, I want to go get that gun. Look at this, what I'm about to put in. Oh. Do you want to go with the top? I mean, we don't have meds with I'm us. Going. You're going with it? Okay. I'll go too. You ready? I'm going with the star. Okay. I'll go with Tommy then. We have an extra. So we had tried to put some puzzle pieces together. Not the first group that I had killed at Oxum's gas station, but the guys that came to counter were the same group of guys that had killed Brocky a while back at the other Oxum's gas station. Here, looking at their names, Brocky could confirm that, which most likely meant they were the guys that lived in this base. How did we know that they knew where we lived? Well, we'd had a run-in with a group right outside our base about an hour earlier, and they ran off in that direction, so we could only assume that it was them. But why were we so careful when running back to our base? We had guns, and the guys we saw running around just had bows. Well, if this group was the group that had come to counter at Oxum's gas station, and they didn't know where we live, and although we don't know their reasoning, they were roof camping at the bow stage of the game, them coming over to door camp was not out of the picture, and if they knew what direction we were coming back to our base from, they could just hide on the opposite side of our base and catch us off guard and get all of the guns we had just profited. That's why we were so careful. Now, we were lucky they weren't camping us, or if they were, they were camping the main base and not the starter that we were actually working out of. But anyways, that's just a little insight to why we played that situation how we did. Right after we got back and dropped all our loot off, we heard shots outside again and we went to see if we could go get more guns and gear. To our left, dude. Yeah, I see, them, see I see them, I see them, I see them. Could we bait them? Let's get to this rock. Yeah. Let's get to this rock. Dude, one of them's full of metal, looks like in front. So there's a horse coming to us. From? There's a guy to our left. Uh, gun, gun, gun! Dude, barrier. I hit him dude, three barrier. times. I hit him once, I hit him once. Horse behind us to the left? Naked. Kill this guy? That clan's gonna be pushing us. Clan's coming, come. Hit him three times, one of the clan members. We should get inside, we should get inside. We can get inside without them seeing and they won't know we live here. Tell me when to open the front door. Killed one. Hide, hide. I'm dead. Hold it, I'm sorry. I'm dead. I'm I'm 
down. I'm down. Can you close the front door? It's open. But but I killed one. I look for one. Full killed one. I'm ready to close. Uh oh, don't die. Do not die. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. But he has your kit. Your gun fell out. Four killed one. Four killed one. There's a big group running over right now. Three of them. Four of them. Five. Holy shit. So there's no one watching the front door, but there's two. Four killed one. There was a dude naked behind our base, though, by the way. Ah, uh, someone grabbed the gun. There's like 30 bodies. Despite how many clan members we had killed, we made no profit from the encounter. There were just too many of them. They were respawning, running back, grabbing guns, holding down our front door. We couldn't get out to the bodies to loot them. And so we just waited in our base for things to cool down. And once they had, we crafted a pretty risky plan. For the couple of hours we've been playing so far, we've been building up a lot of components, but we hadn't really done a big recycling run because up until this point, we didn't really have guns to protect ourselves. But now because of the Oxum's gas station fight, we did. And we wanted to do a big recycle run, despite all of the clans that had been running around in the area. We filled our inventories with components and ran over to that same Oxum's gas station. There was a ton on the line. Luckily, we were able to make it back to our base with all of the scrap and raw materials. That next morning, we continued building up our main base, we put the level 2 workbench in it, we added some doors, and even started making the shooting floor. Now, this is where things got interesting. Now, hear me out, it's going to take a bit of explaining because I actually didn't record any of it, but I have some bits that Brocky recorded. The base that was roof camping us, so to speak, at the bow stage of the game had an AK. They were shooting off of their roof with it. There was a fight at the other Oxum's gas station, the one that they lived near. And needless to say, Brocky and I wanted that AK. There wasn't a shooting floor on their base, so the guy shooting the AK on the roof really wasn't safe. Our plan was simple. Brocky was going to craft a couple ladders, we were going to kill the guy on the roof, ladder up, and boom. Easy AK kit. Here's how it played out. dead bodies over there. Did you hear their SARS? Yeah, I'm at it. That's the base I'm trying to get on. Oh. He's on the roof if you want to spray him down together. Oh, you don't have a gun, do you? He's dead. Nice. Come over here. I have a ladder. He's heading out his roof. I'm gonna leave so he thinks we left, yeah? Okay. Why don't you just sit right here and shoot him when they come up the ladder? Nice. Dog, I'm deep. Shh, shh, shh. Crouch, crouch, crouch. I'm gonna start breaking this. They have a bunch of metal in here. I got AK. Wait, me. Give me whatever you need to depot. I don't know where AK went. I'm, I'm right out. Oh, I full killed you. Why'd you do that? There's boxes to my. There's boxes in there. Loot the boxes. Oh, they're so loaded. Oh. <gasps> He's dead. All right. Just stay outside. I have a lot on me. I Wait, know. Stay outside so they don't. So they don't lock you in. Can I just go depot what I do have? I have a lot yeah, of Yeah, go depot, go depot, go depot. Okay, okay let, me, let me grab that. Come on, come on, I got it, I got it, I got it all. Just, just hold it on you, okay? I'm going to depot. Oh. Wait. I got the AK. Nice. Come here, let me give it to you. Okay. okay. Right. I'm going. But you know what they call me, Brock. What? A AK spray and A. <laughs> There's beds right here, dude. Can you hit it through the door? Yeah, I can. Something? Nice. Just be careful for when he spawns in, of course. Quite obviously, the plan was a huge success. Brocky had killed one of them on the back, and although he didn't have the AK set, we laddered up to their roof and waited for them to come. 
When one of them did, we killed him and went deeper inside the base. Obviously, it's impossible to see without my point of view being recorded, but one of the boxes was completely loaded on components. I grabbed all of them and ran back to our main base as Brocky held down the fort. Another one of them tried to spawn in and kill Brocky while I was gone, but Brocky got the best of him, and because of it, we got our first AK of the wipe. Now, at this point, we were really deep in their base. They had opened a lot of doors for us as they were trying to defend. We expected that their tool cupboard would be behind this stone wall. If we could destroy it, we could kick these guys out of our area for good, but we didn't have enough sulfur to make explosives. However, we could try to eco-raid the wall. We had a pump shotgun that we had gotten from the gas station fight. We researched it, crafted two of them, crafted silencers, and crafted a bunch of handmade shotgun shells and started shooting out the wall. This is actually a really effective way to raid a stone wall. It takes less than 2,800 sulfur to raid using this method, as opposed to 4,800 that it takes using satchels, not to mention satchels are really, really loud. Using pump shotguns with silencers to shoot out a wall is very quiet, and only people that run really close to the base can even hear that it's being done, so doing so won't attract unwanted attention. There's also a misconception that it takes a very long time to raid this way, but that's not necessarily true. Yes, it takes longer than explosives would to blow down a wall, but if two people are shooting at the wall at the same time, it only takes eight minutes to completely break it, and you don't have to repair the silencer or the pump shotgun even once. And so, we placed twig, preventing them from climbing up the ladder that we had placed on their wall, and we put another two ladders against the half wall layer, blocking off their front door. These two things meant that they couldn't come from outside bags and close us in their base without us hearing them break something first, so we both could shoot at the wall at the same time. And that's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> We're so close. I need more shotgun shells. Brock, more. Give me more. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, God. We have enough. We have enough. Wait. Oh. oh. A bolt? What's in here? Oh. <laughs> Okay, okay. Wait, wait, this is almost enough to soft pick an entire wall with spears. So we begin. Unfortunately, the first room that we broke into wasn't TC, and aside from a bolt, there wasn't really anything good inside either, so it was kind of a waste of our time and sulfur. But we decided because there was a soft side wall and we had just gotten a bunch of wood from that room, we would soft side pick into whatever room was behind that wall. So he came out through the garage doors with an AK. Yeah. There's a locker. Mm. Pumps do twice as much to soft side, by the way, than they do to hard side. There's a guy. Ah, shit. Come to me, come to me. I hit this guy so much, but I'm completely out of ammo. They're gonna jump up. I have nothing. Do you have sulfur or ammo? Oh, there's a shit ton. I can jump dog and I got beat. I back bolted shot. I'm dead in here, dude. They're in. Let's just take kits from main base. That's what I'm saying. Let's go, let's go quick before they get the stuff and leave. I want their kits. Oh, I'm... Headshot, double-bodied him. He's one-shot, push. Push, push, I'm, push. I'm one-shot, dude. Oh, they all have AKs. They all have AKs. Oh, they're a lot. There's a guy behind me. He's dead. We got like... Wow. It was that guy. Same guy that just killed me inside the base. Okay. <laughs> Why are they so deep, dude? <sighs> Rusty yeah. to the den. I mean, it makes sense. It's a big server, but still, I'm just tilted. <sighs> Damn. That was going to be really fun right there. That was. Dude, if I took this AK right now... No. 
We don't have meds, we don't have ammo. In just a few minutes, we lost four SMG sets to this big group. Luckily, we had transferred all of the best stuff from the base we had gone deep on earlier, so they really only just got our gear sets. But still, it was frustrating. In hindsight's 2020, if I hadn't sprayed these bullets into the wall right here to break it when it was already pretty much broken, I might have had the ammo to kill this guy on the horse, the AK guy, and that fight very well could have turned out differently. But that didn't happen, and now we were at a pretty significant loss, and to make things even worse, we continued to pick out that soft side wall and there was absolutely nothing inside. But as demotivating as sequences of events like this are, the highs and the lows are just part of Rust. So Rocky and I kept our chins up and we continued to grind. Our goal for the end of wipe day, what it always is, to get our main base down and our compound completely built. I reckon I will go hit some stone. <laughs> Turn us around. Turn us around. Bring us back to base. Bring us home. Oh, he's dead on the ground. I'm gonna loot. Just cover the roof. He's got a lot of wood. Seven health. I can't. Health I can't cover. I'm gonna try to leave. I have a bit, and I'll come back. Yeah, I'm, running, I'm naked behind. Just hold. Guy in the body. He's dead. Finish. Behind the base. Hit him a few times. He's dead. Nice, nice, nice. On the roof! Headshot him, headshot him! Dead. Nice, dude. Excellent. Wait, P5's near me. We'll kill him. I think they're all dead. There's a guy right on me. Wait, there's an AK guy on me? I got twice. Hit him again. Hit him twice. Dead. Nice. This guy has it. I have AK. Run. Bunch of guys. Full, full kits on me. Okay. Run, run, run. Start running. Shoot behind the truck. He's flushed out in your direction. He's dead. They're dead. Loot. Another fucking million bullets, dude. Yeah, I'm telling you, those guys go out with over a stack. It's really weird. Each one of them had over a stack. You get two guns. I got four guns. Nice. Five guns, including a DB. So Easy. six. Oh, perfect. Now we get to research that. So we'd pretty much done everything we needed to do. We did a bunch of farming so that we could upgrade the base to its near final form. We built the compound. We PVP'd quite a bit to get a bunch of SMG sets back as well as another AK. And that random little clip of us driving the car wasn't too random. Brocky had learned how to do some mechanic work. So he strapped two engines onto a long chassis. We both put on heavy metal armor. And we took all of our components that we'd built up over the past few hours to Outpost. We did a huge recycling run, did the final upgrades on our base and logged off for the night. Despite our significant setback, our goal for the first day was achieved. That brings us to Friday, August 28th, the second day of Wipe. Hmm. 
My god, when did this get here? This is a tank. If they're online, all I have to do is hit this node. And... They'll come flying out to try to kill the farmer. But... I don't hear anything. So today's goal, I suppose... Um... Oh. I might try to go kill those guys. They probably were farming, and I don't have too much on me right now. Well. <laughs> You're not gonna win this, buddy. Oh my god. Oh, he's so weak. Okay, actually, I do have a bit on me. I'm gonna drop this here and... Just try to fight him, and hopefully he won't hear me doing this. So if he wins, he won't find it. I don't know if there's multiple of them either, so it's a bit tricky. But if I play close around this rock, he's never going to win a 1v1, just because he has a SAR. Nice. There could be another... Loaded. I don't have enough space. I'm gonna need to stack TCs. So, like I was saying, I think the goal for today. Hmm, I want to completely finish all of the boring stuff. Like putting down flank bases, finish the electricity system. We have turbines now and a large battery and all that, but we can have up to six turrets and I don't even have them researched. So get all of those down, flank bases down, get everything that needs to be done done so that later today and especially tomorrow, which is going to be the most action packed day, we have nothing to do but have fun, which is going to be awesome. So pretty surprisingly, this second day of wipe wasn't that exciting, at least most of it wasn't. We had some little runs here and there to Oxum's gas station and water treatment where we profited pretty significantly, but nothing really too crazy. We fully finished the base, we got an electricity system down, we got beds and bedrooms, extra box space, everything we needed, but it was eerily quiet. In an area that should be popping with PvP, not much was going on. We continued doing little things here and there, progressing with our wipe, and when the afternoon had passed and nighttime was coming, we both took a short break. Brocky was out doing something, and I was eating dinner. I took the opportunity to look through all of the footage that I had gathered so far this wipe to try to put some pieces together. These guys here that were shooting from their roof were now gone. Although we never made it to their tool cupboard, we took pretty much all of their loot and we had killed them so many times as we were going deep that I think they just rage quit. That was good, had we not evicted them from their home, kicked them out of our area, they could have turned into roof campers and possibly created a lot of stress later in the wipe when they had a bigger base and a shooting floor. And then there was that big group that we fought while we were going deep that we lost quite a few SMG sets to. On the inside of the base, there was the guy I died to named Savage Frog, and another member of the group literally called AIDS. There was the guy that killed me around the rock right here, TTV Lieutenant Dan, and lastly, there was the guy that killed me when I respawned, named Cairo, or Cairo. Up until this point, we had no idea where they lived. We knew it was near, but we didn't know exactly where. But then, in looking through my clips, I ran across one of the mini farm runs that I did, and as I was running in the middle of the desert, I was headshot by a bolty right here. It was Savage Frog, one of the members of the group. The only base that could see me while I was running in this direction was this one, and it looked like the early stages of a clan base that was being built. I ran back to my body hoping that it wasn't looted, but I was killed again by Savage Frog. So at this point, I assumed that that group lived in this base, but we didn't know for sure. Now I noticed that this clip was from the first day of Wipe, not the current day, so I tried to find a more up-to-date look at the base, and indeed, it had turned into a clan base. This only continued to confirm my suspicions that that mysterious big group that had killed us multiple times lived in this base. But I needed more proof, so I continued looking through my clips from the second day of Wipe, the current day. After a while, I found this clip, where there was a fight at water treatment, and I was killed several times by an M2. The name of the guy? Cairo. It was a silenced M2, so at the time I didn't know what direction the shots were coming from. I ran back near my body and just waited for the M2 guy to eventually loot it. 
He did, with a teammate, and they both ran off in this direction, past the other Oxum's gas station, right in the direction of that clan base that was now near fully built. Now we knew that that's where that group lived. We're gonna call them the TTV group. Because while everything was happening, we hadn't pieced together all of the names of the members that were in that group, we thought all these times that we were dying on the second day of wipe in the afternoon were random, isolated events, all different groups. But because I had now connected the dots while eating dinner this Friday night, I knew that pretty much all of our loss this day had come at the hands of the TTV group. Wait, the AK guy on the big rock is not with anyone. Full killed AK, full kill, full, kill, full metal AK. Can you come to me? I'm like at the power of I'm dead. It's that Russ Lieutenant Dan guy. Oh, I see them. There too. Don't peek, don't peek. I'm dead. To silence AK. I'm back. I'm actually dead again. He's like camping my body? Wait, it's a silenced M2. Wait, <laughs> I know what they're doing. He's sitting in the tower with a silenced M2. I guarantee that group inside water is all his teammates. He is on the broken down thing. Okay. He's running in the road. I'm dead. Yeah, they're all together, dude. They're, we can't touch this group. We actually can't. Not when they have M2 in the tower, probably a guy covering him and then like a bunch inside water. It's impossible. We, I don't know. Even if we killed him, there's no way we escape. I want to figure out where they live, man. But now, after looking through the footage while eating dinner, like I said, I knew where they lived. But how could that really help us? They just had more guys than us. They had more guns than us. That was the case the previous day when we had died to them when we were going deep. That was the case on this day when we had died to them at water treatment multiple times. Well then Stevie, why didn't you just avoid them? We couldn't! That fight that we lost here on the hill was in the complete opposite direction as water treatment and they were still there. Every single fight that broke out near us, they were there. They ran our area. There was no question about it. These guys were untouchable, and little did I know what was about to happen. But before we continue, I have a few important announcements I'd like to share with all of you. Of course, I'm gonna put the time on screen right now that you can skip to to skip them, but I think you guys are going to want to hear these. The first one is, at the time of this video's release, my new merch drop is going live. This is my third one now, and as always, I'm super stoked about the designs. Now, this was my last merch drop. This was the Naked on the Beach design. Um, my first one was the Revenge Artist design, this one. But this merch drop is a little bit different. This one's more simplistic. There's my logo on the left chest with some blue accents. There's a pattern of my logos going down the right sleeve with 2020 in blue above it. And then there's my logo in blue on the back with the text self-made in front of it. And that text is really important. For me, it references my YouTube channel, of course, and my content creation, because when I began, everyone thought it was a joke, um, including my friends, my family. They thought I was wasting my potential, my academic potential, and just playing video games all the time and making videos that hardly anybody was watching. Um, and it's really difficult. The grind is when you're the only person that believes in yourself, but eventually once you find success in any capacity, it's so extremely rewarding. Um, so for all of you guys, of course, it doesn't just have to be content creation. It can reference academics, sports, your career, whatever the case may be, starting from nothing and paving your own path while pretty much everyone else is a non-believer and eventually finding that success is just amazing and it's really something to be proud of. So that's what inspired the text on the back. That's what inspired this design. Now, if you guys saw the videos for my past two merch drops, you know exactly how this goes. On the first merch drop, the Revenge Artist one, I sold 200 total designs. It sold out in under a day and this was never available again. Same thing goes for the Naked on the Beach design. I sold 300 of these and they sold out in under a day and the design was never available again. Um, I know a lot of you guys are asking for these to be available, um, and maybe in the future I'll do some, some a throwback drop or something like that, but that's not planned now. I don't think I really want to resell these because all the people that did get them can feel really special in being able to have gotten their hands on one of them. And so we're going to continue that theme with this drop. There are going to be 400 total items available. And once they're sold out, they're sold out. So if you've made it to this video in the first day, maybe it's worth checking on the second day, um, head to the website, see if they're still in stock. And if they are, and you like the designs, you want to support my channel, consider getting one. Also, just like my last two merch drops at the checkout, you have an option to leave a comment or a question. I would definitely suggest ask me anything, anything you've ever been curious about. 
And as long as it's not too personal, I'll answer. Uh, I've gotten through a few hundred of them already. I have a bunch more than I need to do. So if you've bought one of the past items, just know eventually I'm going to get to every single one of them. But yeah, if you have any sort of question, I'll directly respond. Second, and this has been in the works for so long. I am so thrilled I can finally share it with all of you guys. But wait, let me get it. As you can probably guess, I've partnered with Ironside Computers and they have made me this absolute beast of a machine. You guys, it's probably reflecting the ring light, isn't it? Probably can't see it that well. I'm just gonna put this down and roll some footage. The outside is custom painted to look like rust because I make rust videos. And on the inside, there's the doodling at the bottom that's painted on to look like the doodles that I draw in my videos. The coolant is the color of my logo. It's all RGB and sketched into the glass is that revenge artist mask from the first merch drop I did. The PC is just absolutely beautiful, but what I'm super, super excited about is the parts that are inside. Of course, it has a 2080 Ti, 64 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM, but the heart and soul of the computer that I'm stoked about is the CPU. It's an AMD Threadripper 3970X. Now, if you're not super familiar with computer parts, it's like the perfect mix of a gaming CPU and a multitasking 3D rendering, just editing CPU. It has 32 cores base clocked at 3.7 gigahertz, which is ridiculous. There's CPUs like the Threadripper 3990X, which are 64 cores, but at a lower base clock. And then there are CPUs that you're probably used to, like the 9900K um, or the 9700K, which are a similar higher base clock and a much lower core count. So this is right in the middle. This is the sweet spot. This is going to be so perfect for what I do. And the reason that I'm so stoked for this CPU is that the longer videos that I make, not, not ones like these that are 50 minutes, but some of the ones that are over an hour and a half long, once I start to get a bunch of footage into a Sony Vegas file, which is the editing software I use, things start lagging. It crashes pretty frequently, and if I don't remember to save it, I can lose a lot of progress that I've made. So this is gonna make the editing process much, much smoother. And on top of that, when it comes time to render the video, sometimes those longer ones can take eight to 10 hours to render, which is ridiculous. And if you've ever rendered something pretty intensive, it's not uncommon for the rendering process to crash halfway through. So it's not quite as simple as just starting the rendering process when I go to sleep and waking up and it's done because oftentimes it will crash. So having something like this that will cut those rendering times down tremendously is amazing. It's really gonna help my productivity. So I'm super, super stoked to get this hooked up to the monitors, to get it plugged in and to get it working. Now, I've talked about this a lot in some of the live streams I've done in the past. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, uh, you know it's the case, but I've always been really hesitant to take sponsorships. And there are two main reasons for that. The first reason is if I were to sponsor a product that I don't wholeheartedly believe in, that I wouldn't use every single day, I think that's misusing my influence as a content creator. And unfortunately, a lot of the sponsorship offers that content creators receive, especially gamers, I wouldn't really use, and therefore I've never accepted one. This is my first real sponsorship. Speaking on that matter, the reason I feel comfortable in doing this is because before this was ever in the works, before this PC was ever built, I literally used an Ironside PC for two years. The video you're watching now is rendered on an Ironside computer. I purchased it with my own money. That's how much I believe in the product. It's been the engine of my content creation and of my channel for two years now. And so when Ironside reached out, I was super thrilled. I was really happy to talk with them, but there's also a second reason that I've always been hesitant to take sponsorships. And that's because ultimately, you guys subscribe to my channel to watch the content that I make. You wanna see Russ videos, you want to uh, kind of experience the thrill of the adventures that I go on. That's why you subscribe, that's why you watch. So it's not really fair for me to use your time to talk about something that just benefits me, like this PC being built for me. And so I voiced this concern with Ironside when I was speaking with them and we came up with a terrific solution. This build is a one of one. 
in terms of the specs and the computer as a whole, but it is a one of two in its design. There is another PC in the Ironside headquarters right now that they built that looks just like this, and it's purely a gaming PC. So it has a 2080 Super, has a 9900K. I'll just put all the specs on the screen. It's an insane PC, not to mention it also has the appearance of this one and I'm giving it away to one of you guys. So all you have to do is go to my website, click on the link, it'll bring you to a form that's gonna ask you personal questions that I legally need to know in doing a giveaway of this size and in a few days, through either a YouTube community post or Twitter, I will announce who the winner is, probably probably both. So yeah, no strings attached. You don't have to you don't have to follow me on Twitter. You don't have to hit the bell icon, do all these little things before entering. Um, just fill out the information and you'll be entered. I will warn you guys, if you try to fill out multiple forms, it has a bunch of different ways to tell where they're all coming from and it will just kick out all of your forms and you will have no chance of winning the giveaway. So obviously I'd advise against that. But I'm so, so thrilled to have the opportunity not only to get this PC, which is going to make um, producing content so much easier, so much smoother, but also have the opportunity to give an insane gaming PC away to one of you guys. And that's all thanks to Ironside. I really can't explain how much respect I have for the company. I used their product before I was sponsored by them. They were so willing to figure everything out and to understand my concerns and find the proper solutions to get this rolling. Of course, they made a gorgeous PC for me. And on top of that, their marketing is just terrific. Their marketing methods, their main one, as you guys probably know, is supporting content creators like myself. Frost has an Ironside sponsorship and a lot of other smaller creators have Ironside sponsorships as well. So it makes it possible for a lot of these content creators that otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to have these insane PCs to be able to produce better content because of it. Because of all of those things, I have so much respect for them. So truly, genuinely, from my experiences in owning an Ironside product for years, if you have anything you need PC-wise, if you want a really, really inexpensive beginner's build, maybe you're just getting into PC gaming, or you want a super advanced, high tier, um, custom design, custom appearance like this, a one of one PC, you can get it all done on their website. So huge thank you to Ironside for making me this PC, for making this giveaway possible. Just head to my website, click the link, fill out the form and you're in. And in a few days, I'll let you all know. But with both of those announcements out of the way, it's time to get back to our story. While sitting there eating dinner that Friday night, I was processing all of this new information about the TTV group, where they lived, how many members they had, the names of each member, how many times we'd actually run into them so far. And after I'd done my fair share of thinking and digesting all of this new information, I sat back and watched some Lucifer episodes, a show that I had just gotten into at the time, which quite obviously inspired my name that I played under this wipe, Lucifer. I was just waiting for Brocky to get back so we could go out and get more accomplished. Shall we see how this list is getting on? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, is that a rocket? Is that a misfire or something in HV? Holy shit, we're getting raided. Hello, hello. Um, uh, they just shot two rockets and explode them. I think they're doing one of the gates. I'm not sure if they're fully raiding or what the deal is. or just testing if we're on. But two regular rockets just hit something. Actually, they may have just breached the compound. I'm not on the roof. All turrets are on, though. They're going to have to go through them to get in. I think they heard me start opening shit, and they're just, like, leaving? Which side? I don't know. Oh my god, our gate's gone right here. Oh, 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 I see. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh shit! We just gotta get to the top tower and we're fine. If I can get up, my god, I can't jump. Full killed one. Nice. Full dead? Full dead. Are they running? Sure. 
I think they're looting a body you killed. Hit him He's once. Dead. Nice. I'm gonna go get a peek at these doors. Wait, he's running, he's running. They're running, they're running, they're running. Headshot, headshot one, he walled. Can you push? He's right here, they got like an M2 or something on me. Aiming at the door. Are you dead? No, no, no. Going no. three times behind that wall? He's behind a rock, he's behind a rock near you. Hit him twice, I'm dead, I'm dead. It's fine, I have a bag. I have a bed. I'm dead. I'm dead. Killed him, killed him. I hit. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Killed the naked on his body. Get that body. Great. Metal guy. He's pushing close to the walls. He's close to the walls, hugging the gate. He's running around. He's coming to you. He's gonna be a breach soon. I'm banking. Don't worry. He was semi geared. He's dead. I don't know if he had a gun. He, or... he, had, he had this guy's whole gear set. Okay. Dead. Uh. Oh my god. Is it just over? <laughs> I can't believe these guys fucking ran. It's an online. It's an online. Get the fuck out of here. Do we know these guys? These are the fucking guys with the M2, dude. They just tried to raid us. Or were they the counterers? Yeah. No, they're the people that tried to raid us. No way. I mean, there were yes. only like three or four of them. Cairo. Wait, this is that group then, dude. Oh, shit. Pathetic attempt, dude. Gee, good one, dude. That was sick. Holy shit. They got so scared when they fucking realized we went online. They didn't know what to do. Actually, think about it though. Like, I, I just looked through the footage. There are at least like five or six of these guys, and they know they're two of us because they've killed us so many damn times so far. And uh, and we have no honeycomb on our base. Imagine they just do any sort of uh, they have any sort of organization in a raid attempt. They just wipe us and we're gone. But the the second I start opening doors, they're like, "One's online. Get out of here!" And they try to run. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, I summed it up pretty well. The group that I had just pieced together by looking at footage that I had recorded throughout the wipe had just tried to offline raid us. How did I know it was an attempted offline and not an attempted online? Well, <laughs> I hadn't been moving around at all for an hour and Brocky wasn't there either. I had been eating dinner. Right after they started raiding and after I had started opening doors, they stopped raiding and tried to run away. It was a blatant attempted offline, which was very low, especially coming from a group that was as big as them, especially because they had no reason to dislike us. They had only profited off of us so far. Brocky and I were both just shocked that they really tried to pull that off. The title of our video is Eviction, and of course that references us kicking out the possible roof campers from our area by going deep on them, but what the thumbnail portrays is the beginning of our rivalry. The TTV group's attempted eviction of us by trying to blow our base down. As far as the raid defense went, because of the similar base designs, it looked like a carbon copy of the raid defense from my last video, Vindication. Except these guys, the TTV group, got nowhere near as close to succeeding with the raid attempt as the raiders did then. And also contrasting that, the raid attempt against us in my last video ended our story. Whereas this raid attempt against us is just the very, very beginning of our adventure. This attempted offline marked the beginning of our rivalry. And of course, you guys have no idea now, but this rivalry would scale up to wild proportions. Both of our entire wipes would be on the line. And as much as I can't stand losing, besting a clan that heavily outnumbers you as a duo is a damn near insurmountable task. But... That's what my next video is entirely about. And so I expect to see you all then. My name's Stevie. Thank you so much for watching.